Welcome, everybody. We have a, a, a new show for you that I'm calling the IT Bod. No, it's not the IT Body. It's a really, really long acronym, I-T-B-O-D-D, -D, uh, which stands for IT Business Owner Didn't Die. Uh, I'd like to welcome to our, our first show, Stan Katz of, of uh, STGIT. Welcome, Stan. Hey, Alan. Good to be here. Glad to have you. Now, I have to confirm, given the title of the show, are you indeed still alive? I believe so, yes. You know, <laughs> all right, you made all it. a simulation and none of us were ever alive to begin with. Uh, I've I heard some new stories on that one. But uh, so as an IT business owner who did not die, uh, mm -hmm. I am certain you have overcame some challenges. And we were speaking in the green room just a, a few minutes ago uh, about a couple of those challenges. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's the purpose of the show is just to show that, you know, as IT business owners, we have lots of challenges that we have to overcome all the time. And sometimes it might even feel insurmountable. But the fact is we survive them, most of us. Yep. Uh, so uh, the first one you mentioned was uh, your company started out as a break fix shop. Yep. And we're even talking about how it impacted the name of your company and why it's STG IT now. Uh, mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about what the challenge was and how you overcame it. Um, yeah, so we started out as a break fix uh, consumer repair shop with an actual storefront. I decided that's the route I wanted to go after, you know, the better part of a couple decades in uh, corporate IT, working in the Fortune 500 space, and wanted to bring that expertise to the individual. Problem I found after too long was it wasn't a super scalable model. And uh, managed services were starting to take hold, and uh, just kind of the whole, you know, proactive support um, for for the client side, and of course the recurring revenue for our side made a lot of sense. So we started blending the two. Um, what happened with a lot of companies uh, that we would engage with? They'd get a little confused about the naming, or would look us up online and see that we're primarily uh, that type of business and not more of an MSP. Uh, we had to uh, rebrand, uh, created a separate brand called the STGIT Group. The break fix shop was Stan's Tech Garage, me being Stan, and that was my <laughs> garage, you know, playing on the whole lots of tech companies started out of a garage, you know, your Apples, your HPs, and probably Very a cool. bunch that, that don't come to mind. Um, so we wanted a separate brand that focused strictly on the SMB space, providing primarily MSP type services. So doing that rebrand, effectively starting over, none of our SEO, none of our uh, existing marketing or reviews or any of that carried really over to it. And it was like starting over a bit as strictly an MSP type business. Uh, so, I mean, how did you survive that? I mean, you, you didn't starve to death during the period of time. Uh, well, the break fix business uh, kept going just kind of as as a separate body. Uh, it was like running two businesses at once. Um, we try we converted some clients, but a lot would not. And um, we continued to offer the services in parallel just under different brands. All right. So you, you had to work harder for a time, but you, it wasn't an all or nothing approach. Uh, I hear a lot of, you know, pundits saying, you got to switch, you got to switch, just make the move, make the move. Uh, yeah. But I like it. That, that's smart. You found a way to survive that. Again, hard work for a while, running two companies, uh, building a new company with your old company. Yeah. Uh, oh, and at the time, I also had the brilliant idea to open a second retail space uh, on the <laughs> other side of the city of Los Angeles, where we're based. Um, and that uh, was a challenge in and of itself because you quickly find out that a little consumer repair shop is not the most scalable thing when it's not owner driven. So um, I was schlepping back and forth. I probably put on like 20 pounds. My back and neck were getting stiff as hell from all the driving and stressing out of going back and forth while trying to drum up MSP sales. It was... Uh, it was a time. Luckily, well, I, was, I only had two dogs at the time and, and didn't have my baby yet. Yeah, wow. So what, what's the takeaway there? Retrospect, what would you do differently? What would you advise others to do if they find themselves thinking similar thoughts? Uh, probably do a little more market research and uh, definitely have 
more systems in place. I mean, on the on a break fix business, it, it's tough to create a ton of systems because most of the things coming in are likely things you will have never seen before and might not ever see again. Yeah, I mean, it's a screen repair or something like that. And you know you have to replace the screen, but what if it's from some laptop you'd never seen before? Well, you don't know the model of the screen. You don't know the process of doing it. So it's tough to price out. So you're kind of scrambling every time. Um, could it be kind of lucrative to, to do that? It, it was for a spell, but uh, I think we're getting closer to that long-anticipated demise of break fix repair mm. IT businesses just in that you know, Macs aren't super repairable anymore, hardware-wise, and they have that Apple Care. So if anything happens to them, it's like 99 bucks, and Apple fixes it. And then on the PC side, you know, labor costs and overhead, and I'm sure you've heard about the inflation uh, situation. Uh, all that keeps going up, but the price of PC laptops is give or take the same, if not less, than when we started that business. So the mass. Uh, takeaway there is um the math is just not making sense anymore to fix a lot of stuff mm. so very good uh, I, I would just add something that i've always told especially myself uh when looking at new ventures is uh anytime it's a new venture your revenue side is always way more delay than you think you might have the number right but the, the date seems to always be wrong uh, how quickly that's going to creep up on you uh, yeah so uh, you, you had mentioned as well uh, before the interview here that uh, in that transition to the MSP space, you also had to figure out your tech stack, which is something that, you know, every Reddit post I ever read seems to be, you know, what tool, what tool, what tool. Uh, but here you are, uh, an MSP have been for several years now. Uh, you have a stack of some sort. Uh, how did you navigate that challenge? Um Well, yeah, I mean, you can't uh, throw a rock in any kind of MSP forum without someone asking, you know, which RMM is the best, which PSA is the best. And uh, I kind of came to the conclusion that it's either the third one you try or um, just one that you actually know well and how to use. I mean, there'll be parts lacking in any of them. Uh, we started out with one that uh, is a per tech license, and those have gotten somewhat popular because the pricing certainty and 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 the that model will work well for a smaller MSP. Then we tried one of the big boys, um, and we weren't really prepared. We probably should have hired some professional implementation help, um, but it uh, it just never felt super right. Felt like we were too small for them to really care about us, and um, not quite. Um, small enough to really go back to one of the per tech ones. So after that, we found like a consolidator who sold one of the other big boys. So we had none of the contract hassles, none of the minimums, none of the, every time I need to add agents, I got to call my sales rep problems. Um, and uh, that's been working out for us for the past few years. And um, while it's not the end all be all, it works pretty well for for our needs, and if that ever changes, we'll reevaluate. But looking at your tech stack consistently is just you're you're spinning your wheels aimlessly. You know, focus on delivering services, focus on selling more. Um, if if your RMM and PSA really aren't doing what you need, you'll figure that out pretty quickly. But I promise you, your clients, if if they know what an RMM and a PSA is. It's only in passing because it's something you told them. They don't care. They right. just want to make, they just want, they don't care how the sausage is made. They just want to enjoy the finished product. Uh, well said. Uh, so once again, you uh, had this challenge and you, you didn't die. Congrats. Did not die, I think. <laughs> still, still not 100%. All right, one more. I'm going to do a, uh, well, maybe two more because uh, these two are very re related uh, to, to our conversations. Uh, one, you started a YouTube channel. Which talking to you about that actually inspired me to to start this series, which I've had in my mind for a while. Yeah. Uh, how the heck did you get comfortable in front of a camera? Because I I still shy away, and this yellow jacket helps me with my protective armor. Oh man. Uh, 
Well, so I did consult with someone who had a bigger MSP channel. In fact, he sold his MSP, but he kept the channel. And you know, now he's like a coach type who who does this kind of work. And he helped me with the setup. And, you know, the first time I shot it, I just I hated the way I looked. I hated the way I sound. I'm like, this is stupid. I just wasted five grand on camera equipment and I'm just <laughs> going to throw it in a big fire pit. Um, and he gave me a, uh, a little bit of, uh, you know, positive reinforcement and a little bit of advice. And then, um, we shot it again, kind of in a different way with some different lighting and, you know, just after doing it a few times, you get kind of easy with it. We found a, a nice company based out of the, the Philippines that, that does editing and, and makes it look very, you know, professional YouTube ish with the captions and the, and the effects and all, and all that stuff. Um, and, uh, while, you know, we're not getting a ton of traction, you know, uh, Alan, you'll, you'll put a link to maybe get us a, some more subscribers. We're still struggling to get tons of views. Other it's than on the, the occasional right video. Now. Appreciate it. And, uh, We'd we'd love to at least hit that hundred subscriber mark so we could change our name from youtube.com slash channel slash some random string that no one can remember to uh you know something like you know youtube.com slash stgit. Um so yeah, you know, we we're putting out content that we think MSP clients would benefit from, but it's probably not super mass market. So, you know, if you're trying to explain to some people why uh you know, security awareness training is is important. That's a it's obviously a very narrow market, but it's the market that we are targeting. Um, but we'll we'll talk about like recent security events and other things in our tech stack. We have a pretty extensive video series about uh, all that's involved in working with an MSP. It's probably like an hour long. It's also on our website. And uh, you know, we're just we're, we keep doing it. You know, we come up with scripts that are about five to fifteen minutes and. Uh, shoot maybe three or four at a time, change up the lighting between takes, and yeah, it's uh, it's something we want to keep doing. So what's the, uh, we had the link on the screen, but what's the best way uh, verbally to uh, find your channel? Um, I have a, uh, a bit link that I usually share with people. It's uh, bit.ly forward slash stgityt for stgit YouTube. Ah, very good. Thank you. Um, and what, what I love about the authenticity of this approach as well is that this is not a challenge you have solved yet, um, right. but but you've overcome a lot of obstacles while not dying, I might add. Um, didn't die. <laughs> didn't Probably. die. Uh, and you're still working on it. It's that that not quitting um, that, that causes survivability, which will ultimately lead to success. All right, last right. one. Yeah, uh, I've been doing it for about a year and a half plus now and no no real plans to stop. Hopefully, Don't someone's quit. getting some. Hopefully, people are getting some value out of it. Uh, very good, and we'll we'll, we'll have a few subscribers your way as well. Uh, Appreciate it. Last topic that you and I have been talking about for a while now, uh, off channel, uh, sales. You are into this new venture of MSP from Breakfix, uh, and you have some capacity, and you really want to fill it. And I, I, I've worked with you in the past about you know what are the different ways to fill that capacity, and it's a problem I don't think you've solved yet. But right. you're surviving it, and you're improving it, and you're making it better. Right. What? Uh, so both sides. What are you doing to to fix the sales revenue gap, and how are you surviving in the meantime? How am I surviving in the meantime? Well, um, you know, we are fortunate enough to be ca cash flow positive based on you know our current uh, between uh, the MRR and the project work. Um, I did manage to close in the past six months a client that we've been targeting for um, quite some time. You know, we were connected with them before COVID. And in closing that account, um, you know, it adds a lot to our bottom line to the point that, you know, we can start being a little more proactive um, about sales. But, you know, I've hired every type of marketing company. Um, uh, companies that provide cold calling, manage your AdWords, um, do any number of the sales stuff, social media marketing. And we've kind of clawed most of that back in-house. I mean, we do have an, an outsourced dialer, but we monitor them pretty closely um, here with our in-house teams. And then, you know, we help 
produce all that content, uh, email and um, LinkedIn marketing. And we do have some internal AdWords campaigns. Now that the world is starting to reopen, I'm going to get out and network more. And I'm looking into more opportunities for some in-person peer-to-peer type networking. And uh, we, you know, we're putting systems in place where we're staying on top of this stuff and tracking everything and trying to make a little bit of incremental progress every week, if not a couple times a week. And very much uh, feeling positive that that will eventually continue to move the needle towards us having a steadily growing and filled up pipeline. Very well said. I I mean, there's a lot of that don't quit in there. I mean, obviously, we have to constantly reassess and adjust. Uh, We we might quit certain habits, but we can't quit the goal uh, and activity toward that goal. Yeah. Uh, Any other general uh, statements or advice for the uh, the IT business owner audience at large? Um, You know, you've got to kind of figure out what you want out of all of this. I mean, some guys are just happy being a solo operator, adding, um, you know, improving their internal processes, automations, and what have you, just to be able to comfortably run their business and support their lifestyle. And, th- and that's great. Some people are happy, you know, with uh, a, a decent amount of MRR and a couple of employees, and, and they don't necessarily need to get any bigger. Um, there's a lot of opportunity out there, but there's, a lot of challenges. And if you can decide what you want, you have to kind of, I know it's cliche, but you do have to identify your goals. And then based on identifying those goals, you got to figure out the steps that you need to take to reach them. And just, if you can just spend a little bit of time every day or every week or or whatever, but, but put in that time and it'll inch you closer to those goals. I completely agree. Well said, Stan. Um, thank you for being on the show. Uh, this will probably air in order, so hopefully this is our first show out. Okay. Um, and uh, I, I think we accomplished what I hope to accomplish for, for all of our listeners, which is, you know, IT business owner didn't die. Uh, you, you overcame stuff. Some stuff you're still figuring out, but you're still here and you're still fighting. And, and that's the message I want to send to everybody. Uh, thanks for being on the show, Stan. Yeah. Happy to be here. Uh, Subscribe to my channel, my YouTube channel, and uh, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Sounds great.